will be seated. Oh, last time we, we have talked about the different contents that uh, we are going to uh, study in this workshop. And aside from that, we have the materials, and I'd like to call the admin to please uh, distribute the materials for those who are willing only. Uh, okay. Can, can we list the names of those brethren who have the copies of these materials? It's not like getting this and then you will evaporate like a bubble. Yeah. Only those who are willing to attend from start to end. Write your names there. Name. What <laughs> time? Okay. Uh, can we come closer? Okay. Yeah. In, in those materials, you will see four modules. Module 1 will talk about introduction. Module 2 will talk about exegetical investigation. Module 3 will talk about the theological reflections. And Module 4 will talk about homiletical presentation. I hope that you, those brethren that have their copies, you will attend this workshop until the end, until you will stand here and you will preach. Amen? This is a deal. Because the admin will, the admin will ask you to pay for these uh, materials. It's not all done out. Amen. So that you have a, a, a so that we value the things that we we pay for. Amen. Now so let's go back to this one because I have some problem with Brother Andrew last time. Remember this? Again, Brother Andrew. Yeah. So let me just uh, go back with this presentation. Brother Andrew, you have the number. Yes. Amen. You don't give me the number 39 now. Okay, because I know your number now. Okay? So you aside from 39, you have a number from yes. 1 to 63. Yes. Okay, that's your number here. Yes. Is it here? Yes. Sure. 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 Anyone? sure. <laughs> this one. Next box. No. Sure. Are you sure? Sure. 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 I'm not so sure about you. <laughs> okay, here, yes. the third one. Yes. Sure, huh? Yes. And this one? Yes. Sure? Sure. Here. No. 
Your head. No. Sure? Sure. Seven? Yeah. <laughs> Number seven. Oh okay, natakot lang yan. <laughs> okay. So, uh, meron ba? Sinong gusto? Sinong gusto mong... Sister Shirley. Okay, Sister Shirley. Okay, Sister Shirley, you have your number. 1 to 63 only. Don't tell me, I'll tell you your number. Ma'am? So, it's in this box? Yes. Sure, ma'am? Huh? Yes. And this box? Sure. Okay, here? Yes. Here? Yes. Sure, huh? Here? Yes. Sure? Yes. Okay, here? Yes. Huh? Yes. 47? Yes. Huh? Okay. So these are the things that we will learn. Amen? As we finish this. Because I will teach you the, the technique here. Amen? As soon as you finish this. Huh? It's fine, boy. Okay. Oh, these are the things that we can cut people. Okay. We can, you know, uh, call their attention. Okay. Yeah. Because we talk about mathematics here, engineering. Amen. Now, let's look at this one. Equipping the saints. Look at your page one there. It's equipping the saints. We are the saints. God wants us to be equipped. If you want to be equipped, say amen. 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 Now, Let's look at Acts 15 verse 7. In Acts 15 verse 7, it talks about after much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. He said, Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice. Everybody say, God made a choice. God made a choice, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. Okay? Now, in this, there are two things that we need to understand specifically in preaching. First, God made a choice. God made a choice that what? That you might, through your mouth, okay, they will hear the gospel. The Gentiles will hear the gospel. Now take a look at this one. The hearing, the, the hearing and the saying, okay, will work together in communicating the message. The man, it is through your ears and through your mouth that you communicate. Amen? Why? Because when you speak it, the word of God, and the one who will hear it, okay, it's a communication. It's a two-way communication. <coughs> Amen? And then, here, the last thing is when they believe in the word that they Hear. I mean, so when, when you talk about this, this is actually hearing uh, the, the word and the word of the word, the word of the Lord that was spoken and the word that has been heard when they are engaged together, this is already the preaching communication. And not only that, when they believe. Amen. That's why here in Acts 15, 7, we say that the Bible says faith comes from hearing and hearing the message. Amen? So that when you want to please God, you must have faith. But faith comes from hearing and hearing the message. If you want to please God, you must have faith. So that faith comes from hearing and hearing the message. And this is what we're, we, bound, we are bound to. And God wanted us to communicate His Word so that others will hear and they will believe. Amen? And then, in, in the in module 1, we will talk about these things. The aim of the preaching class is to help us first to discover. To discover. Right down there, there is a blank there, discover. We need to discover what it means and what it involves to be an expository preacher. And then, develop. Develop skills in preparing expository sermons. Now, it is very important for us to develop this because if you just stand here and you don't have an outline, I don't think people would have an you know, idea of what you are teaching, of what you are preaching. Because you will keep on saying many things which out of your outlines. 
That is why it is very important for us to develop. And there's and it's a skill in developing the the expository outlines. And then aside from that, deepen one's passion for expository preaching. Because you are dealing only with those uh, verses that God has given you. And lastly, he will talk about the dedication, dedicate oneself to excellence in preaching. So these are the four things that we aim for in this workshop. Discover, we need to develop, deepen, and dedicate ourselves to preaching. Not only preaching, but even teaching. Amen? <coughs> All right. Now, let's look at this one. There are three types of preachers. There are three types of preachers. One is you, those to whom you cannot listen, but you seem to be sleepy when you don't want to listen. And then, those whom you can listen. And the last one is those to whom you must listen. So which one you want? Huh? In the first one, <laughs> to whom you cannot listen. To whom you can listen or you must listen. Must. must. Yeah? And even though you want to go to the washroom, you don't want to go to the washroom because you 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 are excited to hear the the second words or the, the second phrases that the preacher will say. You don't want to miss anything then. Now, which type would you want to be? Which type would you want to be? Who has been the most significant influence on your preaching? And what steps are you taking to be the best preacher that you can be? And what do you consider your greatest strengths in preaching? What do you consider your greatest challenges in preaching? Who among you here preach already? Said from Brother Lito. Amen. No, she's there. Brother Oscar. Now, you are thinking of a big group or a formal another situation so, like this. Yes, it's another thing. <laughs> you are thinking of that, but actually you're already preaching when you share the word of God. Amen. So in a small way, you are already preaching. And when you share the word of God in strange what? or to your friend, and you are already sharing the word of God, you are preaching. Amen? And most of these, the ladies are the best preachers. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> they are more, uh, more skilled to do preaching. <laughs> And the father is more of a listener. That's why the mama don't preach. <laughs> right, preaching to please. This one. Either to please God or to please men. Do we please God or do we please men? When we preach. In Galatians 1 verse 10. See, it says here, uh, which one do you please? Men or God? Now, things that we will, we must be aware of, okay? Sometimes we preach and disclosing many things. So when you disclose many things, then don't preach. Papa, don't preach. Because otherwise, you will not give the right message to the people. Amen? That's why... When we preach, do we please men or do we please God? Or sometimes we disclose things. Amen. Especially when when it touches our life. Okay? We don't do that. Because though you preach here, you are not accepted. You are not accepted in hearing that message for you. God is just using you. Amen. God is just using you. That's why later on as we move on in preaching, you will know why. Now look at this one. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, this is the, the verse. It says, study and be eager. Can we read it all together? 
Say it again. Study and be here. Do your utmost to present yourself to God approved and set by Christ. A workman who was an occult to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing the right and handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. And this is what God wants us. And it says here, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing rightly, handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Now, Apollos in Acts 18 verse 24 to 26 was a eloquent preacher. He was so good when he preached. But there was some missing in his preaching. And when, let me just paraphrase this, when Aquila and uh, Priscilla and Aquila heard these things, they cornered Apollos. Apollos, you're very good, you're very good to preach, but something is missing in your preaching. And so they, they taught Apollos the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, because Apollos only knew about the baptism of John. And so they explained to him the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when the time when Apollos heard these things and learned about these things, he became more furious in preaching the word of God. And, and this is what, we are, what, what is happening now to us. See, we, 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 we simply know these basic things. But why we are here? Because we want to learn more. Amen. So that we become like Apollos, peerless and boldly preaching the word of God. Amen? The divine command to preach. Look at this one in your notes. A preaching is essential. It is very essential for us, especially for the church. And Christianity is in its very essence a religion of the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. The word of God. He spoke through the prophets. He spoke supremely through his son. The word made flesh and he continues to speak through his spirit. And that's why they say that the word of God is alive. Amen. How among you here believe that the word of God is alive? Amen. That it, it, it touches our lives. And then it is a God speech which makes our speech necessary. We must speak what he has spoken. Amen. So the, the blank there is God's speech. And then we preach because we are commanded to preach. Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. God has commanded us to preach. Can we read Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20? What is written there? Huh? Can we read that one, Brother Robert? Matthew 18, 28, verse 18 to 20. Can you read it aloud, Brother? Matthew chapter uh, 28, verse 18 to 20, it says like this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. So this is the command of God to everyone. Amen. Not only to the pastor, not only to the elders, but to all. Amen? So it doesn't mean that you are a member, you are not commanded to preach. All of us are commanded to preach. All of us are commanded to teach. Amen? Now, preaching is distinctive to Christianity. When you say distinctive, what does it mean? Huh? What does it mean when you say distinctive? Anyone? Sister Shirley? Yeah, um, to be distinctive meaning it has its very specific characteristic. Um, it, it actually differentiates you from anybody else. It makes you outstanding from other forms of religion. Amen. So it, it, it becomes a they will see the difference in us as believers of Christ. Amen. Becomes distinctive. And that's why they said for unbelievers and believers, the distinctive thing is you can preach. Wow. Although 
they, I'm not saying that unbelievers cannot preach also, but they can preach. They can, they can, they can also say. Or they can also uh, speak words of encouragement. Why not? But us, we 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 say it through the Spirit of God, through the Word of God. Amen. There is more more power in it. Amen. That's how distinctive you are, being believers of Christ. Now, other religions have their accredited teachers, but the rabbis, the gurus, the mullahs only interpret the ancient tradition. But for us, only Christian preachers claim that they are under a divine commission to preach. And that's why you will see that some, some preachers are so anointed. And, 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 and you can see the difference when they preach the Word of God, when they speak at the Word of God. And, and to preach and that by the work of the Holy Spirit, they actually proclaim the oracles of God in 1 Peter 4, 11. The oracles of God save us the word of God. Huh? Now 1 Peter 4, verse 11. Can we read it all together? If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to Him be glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. So that when, even when we read the scripture, I, I like the one when, when Sister uh, Jen read the scripture before, she was so uh, so uh, slow and so uh, what do you call this one? Uh, very careful, amen. In, in in reading the word of God, and that's it. Because it's the word of God. The word of God is alive, amen. So when we read even the word of God, we we read it with power. Let's let's make a let's make a point that this is the word of God that is alive. Amen. Amen? That, that's why when we read, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. See, there's some, 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 some power in it. Now it says, if anyone serves, he should do it with strength God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to He be glory. And the power forever and ever. Man, there's, a, there's a difference between when you, when you, if anyone speaks, they should do it as one speaking. And, and then and the very words of God, if anyone, he should do it. You see, you see the difference. Amen? But from now on, you just read it. Just read it slowly, carefully. Amen? <coughs> When Paul interfaced with society in Corinth, he gave this inspired testimony in 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 21. It says, can we read it now? Okay. Can you read it? Ready? Go. To preach the gospel, not to the words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be empty of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will prostrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish with the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased with the foolishness of what God was preached to save those who believe. Amen. You see the difference? See? Now what if you you read it with, with more power? Look at Sister Sherry when she reads it. Can you make a song of Sister Sherry? Of reading this one? <laughs> well, I think, um, before I read it, it's, it's just a matter of of um, understanding, for example, the punctuation marks. If you see a question mark, read it as a question. If it is a comma, post a little bit. And if it is a period, then stop. Okay. 
For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to those who believe. It's very nice when you hear it, or when you read it like that. Yeah? There, is, there is power in reading the word of God. Now, something awesome happens when God confronts an individual through preaching and seizes him by the soul. See, when you stand here and you preach the word of God, God is doing something. Amen? And, and, and not only that, uh, finish. Something awesome happens when God confronts an individual through preaching and seizes him by the soul. Now, principles of interpretation. There are principles of interpretation versus hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the science and art of interpreting the Bible. Why science? It articulates principles and investigates the laws of thought and the language. Why art? Because it teaches what application these principles should have. Yeah? The art of preaching. Yeah? Now this is what we are going to do in expository preaching. You will not only stand here to preach, but you will learn how to make an outline, how to interpret things, read them in the Bible, and then you will deliver it through homiletical presentation with body language and everything. Amen? And then you will be uh, videoed by Brother uh, Wendell, and then there will be a uh, constructive criticism regarding how we stand. Is that okay? By the time, only few remains. No, <laughs> See, how many, how many of us here? 28. I have 28 baby. No? But then, after that, when we go to homiletical presentations, slowly they have so many excuses. <laughs> Rebuke it, my brothers. Yeah. Rebuke it. Because this is one way of equipping us. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. See? Because God wanted us then, to, to preach His Word. Amen? It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, but you keep on doing it, you keep on practicing it. And we don't know how God will work in us. Amen? And when God uses us mightily, we will see that anointing in us. Because the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good news. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, the recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. Amen? What verse is that? What, what verse is that? Luke? Luke 4, verse 18 and 19. Amen? Therefore, hermeneutics provides us with a strategy that will enable us to understand what an author intended to communicate. Now, how many authors we have in the Bible? Remember in our doctrines? How many? 40 authors. How many books we have? 66. 66. Yeah. Exegesis is the de determination of the meaning of the biblical text in its historical and literary context. So this is, see, when, when you look at this one, these are in its exegetical investigation. You're investigating what the author means, what God says to the first readers, to the first hearers of his word. And then exposition is a communication of the meaning of the text with its relevance to the present day hearers, with the contemporary period, with our period now. 
It is, is what we call the exposition. Now, how did we are the so-called the second hearers of his work? And then the homiletics is the way, is a science and art by which the meaning and relevance of the biblical texts are communicated in a preaching situation. This is where you will stand here and you will preach and you will do the body language and everything. Don't just say body language, I mean, you know, aside from that body language, you will speak it also, <laughs> the Word of God. Some, some of us, you will see, they were speaking in monotonous way. But, as I said, preaching is an art. Amen? Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, sometimes it, it touches the heart. And when you look at the eyes of the hearers, the Word of God is speaking to them. It's not like just looking at your nose and everything, and then finish. Summary of my preaching class. We're not like that. Amen? This is how we, we will... Uh, God is teaching us to stand here and do as the other preachers have already experienced. And this is all, all actually the, the, the uh, uh, research of Dr. Roy Versosa. He made the research about these things and made, it a, made a book, a manual, and he wanted, because he wanted to have all the Filipino preachers to preach us the way God wants us to do it. Amen? And that's, this, is, this is the, the hatred of Dr. Bersosa. He hated these things. He hated preachers who preach monotonously. He, preached, he, he hated preachers who don't know how to preach. They just stand there and read the message from YouTube, from, uh, I don't know, See, without heart, and this is his, his uh, research of this is, and he wanted us, the leaders, to preach us what God has commanded us. Amen? So, pedagogy, pedagogy, the other word for this is andragogy. Pedagogy is, it talks about the children. It's a science and art by which the meaning and relevance of the biblical text is communicated in a teaching situation. Why pedagogy? Because children will learn if you keep on repeating the word. Amen. For andragogy, when you keep on repeating, that is for the children. <laughs> and, but the word, as you keep on repeating it, repeating and repeating, Amen. It comes to our mind and it goes to our heart. Amen. That's why we they, they use the word pedagogy instead of andragogy. And then this is the overview of hermeneutical uh, outlines. We have hermeneutics, exegesis, exposition, homiletics, pedagogy, and edification. Now we will talk about these things, hermeneutics. Uh, exegesis, exposition, until we go with homiletics. There are three things which we need to know. One is exegetical investigation, theological reflection, and homiletical presentation, which is the one part of the overview of the hermeneutics. Amen? Now, look at this one. Hermeneutics, exegesis, and exposition. Let's make some difference of it. When you talk about recipe, you talk about the hermeneutics. However, for exegesis, you are already baking. You are already make, baking the, the cake. However, for exposition, you are already serving it. Huh? So that's the difference. When you talk about the theories in hermeneutics, in exegesis, these are the tasking. However, for the exposition, this is already transmitting the message. For the principles, these are the practice for exegesis and for exposition, you are already preaching. And so, there is, you persist, you do the, the research on these things, like when you have recipe for baking, for baking a cake. So you must have to research, right? 
you, you, you gather information and then you write down which one fits in your taste and that, then you, you, you bake it and then you call your, your friends from Shekinah Grace and then you serve it. <laughs> that's it, no? That's, that's how simple is it. We, we go to the drawing boards for engineers, we go to the drawing boards, we, we do the blueprint, and then we build the building. Amen? That's how these things work out. And then expository preaching is the communication. It is the communication of a biblical context, concept derived from the transmitted through a historical, grammatical, and literary study of passage in its context which the Holy Spirit first applies to the personality and experience of the preacher then through him to his hearers. Look at this. You will experience this with the word of God that you are going to preach before you can serve it, before you can preach it. God will let you experience. How would you, how would you preach if you won't experience that? It will just be a reading praises, reading statements. But when you experience it, it comes to the heart. And when you say it to the, to the healers, there is power in it. Amen? They can see that you really experience this because it comes from the heart. Amen? You, you see what I mean? You understand what I mean? Then the concept is applied to the preacher. When the preacher prepares a biblical sermon, God prepares the preacher. See? When, when a preacher prepares a biblical sermon, God prepares the preacher. As he studies the Bible, the Holy Spirit studies him. Wow. And not only that, until a preacher has allowed the message of the text to touch his own life, he has no right to preach it to others. God is interested in developing messengers than messages. And since the Holy Spirit confronts man primarily through the Bible, a preacher must learn to listen to God before he speaks for him. See? Even in the drawing board, even in, in, in hermeneutics, God is already talking to you. When God already uh, gives you hints, God touches you before you can relay the message to the listeners. All preaching is to some extent self-disclosure by the preacher. So the question is this, what will you disclose about yourself when you preach? This is a challenge, see? What, what are the things that I'm going to disclose? If this touches my life, if this is not good, I will not say it to the, to the healers, no, see? If it touches you, then make a point that, you know, because no one is accepted in the Word of God, amen? Is there anyone exempted in the Word of God? All of us. Yeah? All of us, remember this, are not perfect. Okay? We are only saved by the grace of God. And God is teaching us from glory to glory until perfection. Because if you say that you no longer sin, you attain the sinless perfection class, you are not included in this church. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean. <laughs> Who among you take the serious perfection? We? <laughs> the concept is applied to the hearer. Biblical preacher approaches the text in three ways. First, an exegete, he struggles with the meaning of the biblical writer. And then secondly, as a man of God, he wrestles with how God wants to change it personally. So it's a yimuna, no? it comes first to you. And then thirdly, as a preacher, he ponders what God wants to say to his congregation. Because you have meditated the word of God, you have experienced the power of God, you have experienced the word of God to you, then you could relay it to the listeners, amen, with heart and with power, amen, as they hear the word of God. Now, number two, biblical, that biblical preaching usually lacks creative applications. The question is asked, what difference does it make? Uh, when you when you preach, see, preaching is different to teaching. Teaching you can just do like this, but preaching is different. You can make your voice lower or up. Okay? You can make some body languages and everything, as long as you know how to 
to relay the message to the people. As long as you know how to touch the heart of the listeners. Amen. This is a big difference. That's why we are distinctive. Amen. Say to the person on your right, you are distinct. <laughs> Scripture testifies that it is relevant to contemporary needs. Can you think of a text? What are these temporary needs? Or contemporary needs? I mean, like in, in the Old Testament, there are things that some of them are no longer applicable in our present situation. But how would you do it? I mean, in our present situation, in contemporary period. And then, so ask the question, what real need does this text address? How can I challenge my congregation to lead this sermon in the days ahead? See? So, really God is working to the preacher before he relates it. Now, uh, we still have how many minutes? Okay, now I have these things. Let me just break the group into four as we have done before. Group one, group two, group three, and group four. Now look at this term, look at this uh, game. It is a game for each group. How many words you can make with these things? Okay. And you will, recite, you will say it to the group. Amen? How many? How many words you can make with this? Now, there is a rule that there is always an E in every word that you will do. Yeah. So you do it in group. You form in group. Group one, group two, group three, group four. We are here. Group one, group one. Group four. Group two. Group four. Group four. Group four.